day to bed. As we work each day to transform our state economy for the future, to ensure that we're creating solid and diverse-supporting jobs for hard-working Missourians for years to come, we are very fortunate to have the leadership of our state chief executive, Governor Jay Nixon. Governor Nixon's commitment to creating jobs and getting Missouri's economy turned around is a top priority from day number one in office. That commitment is demonstrated by innovative initiatives geared toward those goals, including the Missouri Manufacturing Jobs Act, which gives the states the tools we need to save 16,000 direct and indirect automotive manufacturing and supplier jobs in Missouri. The Training for Tomorrow program, which has increased the capacity of our state community colleges to train Missourians in highly technical fields of the 21st century. The Small Business Loan Program, which provides low-income loans to Missouri small businesses to help them expand and to thrive. The Comprehensive Jobs Bill that boosted our best and most effective tax and city programs, while at the same time cutting franchise tax for over 16,000 small businesses. A tuition freeze agreement with Missouri public community, uh, excuse me, colleges and universities for two consecutive years, so that Missourians can get a degree and train for the future without worrying about tuition raises. And the Home Ownership Purchase Enhancement Plan, which helped jumpstart the state's housing construction industry here in the state. These are just a few of the initiatives that have been spearheaded best by the governor since he's been in office, and we're starting to see the results. Results which include more than 26,000 new jobs created in Missouri so far this year, and most of them in the private sector. Gentlemen are back. We're moving from the recession under the governor's leadership. It is my great pleasure to introduce the governor of the state of Missouri, the Honorable Jay Nixon. I guess it's a relatively bad sign when your speaker needs water in case he loses energy during a, an address. I, I won't be that that long. Um, <clears throat> it is uh, always great to be back at uh, my alma mater, and we're tremendously pleased to have uh, President Forsey helping us and hosting us here not only today but uh, throughout the entire year. We're also very appreciative. He's guaranteeing. Uh, you know, a minimum of nine and two for the football team this year, <laughs> <laughs> which gives us, yeah, yeah, it, uh, uh, yeah, yeah uh, I, I've said enough about that. I'll just, I'll just, uh, we all have. Let's get on. Let's get, we'll get, we'll get to the game. <laughs> um, it's also nice to be on campus before uh, before the students. Um, it's a wonderfully calm time. Uh, Really, really quickly. I, I mean, just uh, just uh, before I get into the, to the formal remarks, uh, David is uh, uh, was a great addition to our team. Director Kerr, uh, who we uh, recruited hard to get, uh, and has now I think uh, got his feet solidly on the ground. Uh, it, it shows you how the the human capital assets are so so important in what we all do. Uh, and I just could not be uh, uh, any more pleased with with his efforts. And I thank him for being my point person on job creation and uh, overseeing the process we have here. And I and I hope that you all are as as excited to work with him as we are to, to have him in, in the Show Me State. And David, we thank you for your, your public service. Um, also, we have, uh, I'd like to mention before we get started, the Executive Advisory Board. We have uh, Anne Marie Baker from UMB in Springfield, Paul Combs uh, from Kennett, uh, Bill Downey from KCPNL, and David Stewart of Worldwide Technologies. We appreciate their leadership and their assistance uh, in overseeing this process uh, to make sure that we are uh, move forward. Uh, as some of you may know, I just returned from my second tr uh, trip to visit Missouri troops stationed in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, these brave men and women volunteered for duty with America's Armed Services. Each and every one of them volunteered. It's really s interesting and, and illuminating uh, to, to see the, the fact that they all went there because they said they would. They stepped forward and chose to put their lives in the line for our freedom and our security. And during my time overseas, I witnessed the professionalism and dedication of these men and women time and time again as they flew us by helicopter over desolate mountains in remote provinces, as they demonstrated the equipment they used to pinpoint mines and disarm IEDs, and sitting there with the Missouri Guard unit that has blown up 250 IEDs already in their short time over there. I've also lost two brave Missourians in that process. We saw firsthand the true price of freedom during the humbling visits we also took to field hospitals all across Afghanistan and Iraq. Throughout my trip, 
The soldiers ask me a number of questions. What's the big news back home? How's the weather? Do you think the Cardinals are going to the World Series? But everywhere I went, they asked one question more than any other. And that was basically in one form or another, Governor, will there be a job for me when I get home? Now, as we rely more and more on the citizen soldiers from our National Guard to complete missions in both Iraq and Afghanistan, men and women from the Show Me States are putting their lives and their jobs on hold to fight for freedom's cause. While these soldiers battle the forces of terrorism halfway around the globe, the economic reality back home is never far from their minds. It's up to us, to each of us, to help put these heroes back to work when they return from active duty. But the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan aren't the only places that I've spoken with folks about their economic worries and their hopes. Over the past 18 months, I've talked to single parents who are going back to community college to earn a new degree that might mean better hours and higher pay. To small business owners who are taking big risks to turn their dreams into bricks and mortar. To skilled factory workers who worry that the local plant and their livelihood might get shipped overseas. And to young college students, so full of hope and energy, but always worried about the growing burden of debt. As governor, my number one priority has always been clear. Creating jobs, and moving our economy forward. To do that, we've invested in education, job training, and workforce development, even during, and especially during, these challenging budget times. We've created new tools for small businesses and made major economic development tools stronger and more strategic. And we've taken strong steps to make government smarter, more accountable, and more efficient. Over the past few months, our economy has gained momentum. We've scored big wins when companies like IBM, Unisys, Jet Midwest, Mamtech, DuPont Pioneer, and others in very competitive environments have chosen the Show Me State for their investment and new jobs. In fact, over the past five months, as Director Curran said, we've announced the creation of more than 26,000 new jobs in our state. This is a strong sign that Missouri is headed in the right direction. And we will continue to work tirelessly to build on this beginning momentum. We will continue to concentrate on our immediate recovery. We also need to keep the focus on our long-term economic growth. That means jump-starting our economy now and also laying the groundwork for growth for the next 5, 10, even 20 years. And that's why we're here today, to take the next step in the process of assessing Missouri's strengths, assets, and opportunities for growth. As a state, we must compete for the jobs of tomorrow and transform our economy for the steady growth in the 21st century. Putting together a plan that will be our state's blueprint for economic success may seem daunting. As part of the process, we've got to take a careful look at Missouri's different industries, different sectors, and different regions. That's why we're turning to you, the experts. Just take a look around this room. You all have had a chance to spend some time together already. You'll see many of Missouri's preeminent leaders from manufacturing and life sciences, from education and construction, utilities and financial services, labor and health care, and more. Everyone in this room has experience that will be invaluable in this planning process. Whether you've crafted a business plan for a small business or a major corporation, or executed a plan as a manager, grown a business in urban or rural Missouri, negotiated a labor contract, or conducted market research or analysis, your insights and knowledge will help make this planning process the success it has to be. Over the coming months, the steering committee will receive a mountain of recommendations, proposals, and suggestions. With so much information coming at you, it could be easy to become overwhelmed and to lose sight of the essential objective. Please do not let that happen. There's a say, saying, paraphrased from Alice in Wonderland, that applies here. If you don't know where you're going, then any road will get you there. When it comes to economic development, that approach simply doesn't work. As a state, we can't go down every road. We can't invest in every emerging industry. 
This committee has a vital task to point Missouri down the right road and draw a map that will lead us to our destination. We are asking you to distill all the information you receive and help us form six to eight strategic key strategies to transform Missouri's economy over the next five years. These strategies should be bold. They should be backed up by data. And they should embrace Missouri's diverse workforce, diverse region, and diverse local economies. We are, quite frankly, the most diverse state in the country, regionally and in every other way. To form these strategies, you're, doing, you're going to have to make decisions about which roads will lead us to where we need to go, and quite frankly, equally importantly, which roads we're not going to take, which ones won't. Some stuff's going to have to come off the list, too. This isn't about stacking up a bunch of lists. This is about focusing. To transform Missouri's economy for the 21st century, we need to act, not react. And to do that, we need to plan. When it comes to our economic future, the Show Me State has some very clear assets, like our central location, perfectly situated as a transportation hub right in the middle of the country. Our premier destinations for tourism and recreation, be it Branson in the southwest or the lakes and rivers and streams all across our state, our hunting lands that continue to attract folks from around the world, our streams, our beautiful state parks, our natural assets, our hardworking, dependable, and skilled workforce. Missourians show up early and stay late to get the job done. We should not underestimate the power, the simple power of the ethic of our state of being hard workers, and we are. Our spotless AAA bond rating and balanced state budget. We have made the tough choices, unlike some other regions and some other states who stand poised for our significant, undeniable challenges. We have definable, doable challenges because we've made difficult choices on the front end. Our diversified economy. We have been blessed by an economy that's very diverse, and that's why your task is so hard. We have a lot of divergent assets. Melding those into a focus for the future is going to be very challenging. Uh, as, as you all know, we have, we have withstood this national uh, downturn better than most states. Our unemployment rate has stayed under the national average. We've added jobs here. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the diversity of our economy. We cannot give that up. Even though we have to be focused, we have to be continue to, to deal with it. Our world-class research institutions. I mean, one of the burdens of being the show-me state is sometimes it takes us a while for us to believe ourselves, you know. But when you are here at this institution, or the institutions we have in St. Louis and Kansas City, in our, in our research institutions around this state, both in the public and private sector, are incredible. And a low-tax environment that encourages business growth and expansion. We have stayed the course on holding the line expenses for business, even clipping back some of those by ending the franchise tax for small businesses, making sure that we'd have a predictable, low-tax environment for years to come. Certainly, we still have a long road ahead. But with these assets and the right plan, I know Missouri's economy will be poised for recovery and, quite frankly, growth. Throughout this process, I challenge you all to look beyond easy solutions and focus on opportunities for transformation. And understand that the product you work on here is not going to be some report on the shelf. This is going to be a blueprint that we're actually going to build from. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to use your work. <laughs> what you're doing is vitally important. Uh, like I say, we're, we're, we are going to, to work throughout this process to have a product that we use. But we do need to address some key questions. What will it take to ensure our economy can thrive in a new global marketplace? How can we leverage Missouri's strengths? How can we create synergy that will accelerate growth? Developing this plan is not going to be easy. The only way to get it done is to roll up our sleeves and get started. It takes work. After today's first steering committee meeting, we will begin the process of seeking input and information from six regional planning teams. Director Kerr will go through that process with you all and what we're doing, but our goal is to gather input from business, industry, and labor leaders in every corner of our state. Go out, get that information, once again, then drive that back to the center. The final outcomes of this process will be six to eight strategic objectives 
that will transform Missouri's economy for the 21st century. These objectives will pinpoint existing and future industries that will drive growth. And they'll be backed up by specific tactical plans that will help us accomplish the objectives within five years. As you can tell, we are going to get in a hurry, in a hurry. Now this is a major undertaking, but to get Missourians back to work and to get our economy moving, we must act quickly. I need your priority recommendations on my desk by December 1st. We simply don't have time to lose. Uh, this is the time to make the decisions. I have faith and confidence of every person in this room and the thousands of Missourians that you represent. And I know that you can rise to the occasion, to this challenge, and help us meet this critical timeline. Today, our state stands at a crossroads. Missouri is a global leader in biotechnology and life science, in aerospace and manufacturing, in agriculture and in transportation. These are industries that have guided us for decades. Our task at this critical turning point is to pinpoint the industries that will lead us into the future. Ten years ago, about half the households in, Missouri, in America had a home computer. Today, kids in middle school are surfing the web from the palm of their hands. Twenty years ago, a cancer diagnosis was all too often a death sentence. Today, medical scientists are pioneering new breakthroughs in the diagnosis and treatment of that serious condition and so, so many others. Thirty years ago, women accounted for roughly one quarter of the managers and executives in Missouri's workforce. Today, that figure has risen to more than 51 percent. The world is changing. Technology, innovation, and progress are leading our economy in new and exciting directions. Our job is to make sure Missouri stays ahead of the curve. We want the next generation of scientific and technology breakthroughs to take place in labs right here in our state. We want to build new lines of cars and computers and solar panels at manufacturing plants across our state. And let me make a side note here. I believe in the future of manufacturing in Show Me State. I'm a huge believer that, that in order to, to, to have a, a full GNP as Americans, we have to have products. <laughs> you know, we can, this is not merely a service economy. Uh, and that the changing demo, the, the, the things that are existing is, is and one of the great benefits of being governor of the state is you get to go to a lot of, a lot of businesses, a lot of facilities. And, and quite frankly, the First Lady is a huge fan of manufacturing. So we go to a lot of manufacturing plants. That's the exciting date that I am. Um, <laughs> But as we see the shift, I mean, we saw a time period in this world in which, which labor costs were the definition of, of, of how you could, you could compete in manufacturing. Those days are long since gone. I mean, with the, with the shifts of more robotics, with more technology, and with, with the need to have safety on the workplace as a competitive differential, where, where we're well positioned, as you look at what we're doing now in manufacturing, we are in the process of reinvigorating certainly a leaner type of manufacturing, a different type of manufacturing in some sense. Robots will do it and when, the, when, when, when for example a car needs to be painted green instead of blue, you'll, instead of just taking out another paintbrush, you're going to go over to a computer and have to, and have to enter that and test it. But, but we can make those cars here in Show Me State. We can make those products here and we can compete doing it. So I, I, I just I, I continue to believe that, that as we look forward that, that there are many opportunities in, in, in manufacturing. And we also want to be a destination where families come to hike and bike, shop and dine, hunt and fish. I mean, we are a, a, already a magnet. We, we, uh, you know, Director Templeton and his team at the Department of Natural Resources look over a park system that in this country from a state perspective is second to none that attracts at this point, 18 million visitors a year. That brings people from all over the Midwest for all sorts of a myriad types of recreation. Well, we have, and, and at a time in which hunting land is, is harder and harder to find, opportunities for, for activities in that area, outdoor activities and hunting land, we, we are blessed with natural forests, national forests, conservation land, DNR land, and if things go as planned, uh, over the next uh, not so many months, elk being reintroduced into the show me state, which as you can probably tell I support. Um, it's not going to be the basis of our new economy, I understand that. <laughs> but, uh, 
but I, but once again, I, I think these these natural assets are part of the picture of our state, part of the flavor of our state, and part of the background of what the future can be. So to transform our economy, you've got to focus on the industries and assets of the futures and determine, quite simply, which roads to follow. This is an exciting turning point. And the decisions we make through this planning process will guide our policy decision for years to come. No one is here by accident. Everyone here is important to the process. Everyone here is important, vitally important to the process. And as your governor, I appreciate your willingness to serve the people of your state. And I guarantee you that your work will make a difference. Because together, we're going to gather the data, and we will draw the map. And we will move Missouri down the right road to transform this economy for the 21st century. We are pioneers heading out on a new journey. We stand on the shoulders of many, many great leaders and business leaders in our state. We have a rich entrepreneurial tradition and a rich and diverse opportunity. The places in this country that make the hard choices and make the right choices based on the data and information and then live those choices will create an economy that attracts people, attracts capital, and defines our future. Thank you for being willing part, willing partners and leaders in getting that done in our state. Thank you and God. Governor, if we could just get you more excited about Missouri and economic development, we'd just be we'd go home. <laughs> Um, we have a few minutes. We're going to reconvene at uh, 1.15, but uh, certainly any members of the committee that would like, to would like to come up and visit with the governor, he will make himself available to chat with you. So please feel free to come up and uh, have a discussion with the governor, and uh, we'll see you back in the room at 1.15.